Hola, que tal amigos? This is Professor Pablo with Learn Spanish Fast, Rápido, Rapidísimo, with Professor Pablo. Buenos días, buenas tardes, y buenas noches. Siempre, no importa la hora que sea, es un gran momento para aprender español. All right, our lesson now is the past imperfect. It is the second of the two past tenses in the Spanish language. Simply put, the past preterite, which we have studied, we ended it up with a car, gar, zar verbs. We know that the past preterite we use to reflect an action in the past that is completed. It is over, it is done, it is finished. Like, I went to the game, it rained yesterday, I saw the movie, the phone rang, the car ran out of gas. Those are things that happened and are over. The past imperfect, though, is for an incomplete past action. Basically, when you refer to an action in the past, if the action was still happening when you referred to it, you're going to use the past imperfect because it is incomplete. Now, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you yet. We're going to go through the usage, as you see, pointed out here on the sheet momentarily. But let's take a look at the endings for AR verbs. For AR verbs, it's aba, abas, aba, abamos, aban. Okay, you take the infinitive like hablar and take the AR off and add your ending. Hablaba mucho. She used to talk a lot. Notice that the ending for he and she, aba, is the same as I, aba. Notice that the ending for they is just the N factor. You add an N, right? The factor, I mean, excuse me, the ending for two, the U familiar, is A-B-A-S with an S. And of course, Abamos, the longest of the five, is for the imperfect. So the endings for AR verbs, Abba, Abbas, Abba, Abamos, Aban. Now, for ER and IR verbs, the endings are identical. Ia, Ias, Ia, Iamos, Ian. For example, comer. I used to eat a lot of bread. Comia, mucho pan. Comia. You used to eat a lot. Comias. He or she used to eat a lot, comía. We used to eat a lot, comíamos. And they used to eat a lot, comían. It works for ER verbs and works for IR verbs. The verb vivir, to live. Vivía, vivías, vivía, vivíamos, vivían. We used to live along the coast, vivíamos por la costa. So those are your endings, and they go on the verb stem. What is the verb stem? After you take off the infinitive ending of AR, ER, or IR, what you have left is called the verb stem. <clears throat> Do we have irregulars in the past and perfect? Yes, but only three, the least amount of any tense, right? Only three irregulars in the past and perfect. And you see them on the top of the sheet. The verb ser, the verb ir, to go, bear, to see, Ser is era. You Taylor Swift fans, you Swifties out there, this goes like this. Era, eras, like her tour. Era, eramos, and eran. There's an accent on the E of eramos because it's a vowel stressed three vowels back. It breaks both rules. It gets an accent mark. Era, eras, era, eramos, eran. Like we were friends. Eramos, amigos. Accent on the E. The verb to go. Iba, we've done this before. If you want to say what you're going to do, it's like, I'm going to go boy a ir. Now, in the imperfect, I was going to go would be Iba a ir. It was going to rain. Iba a llover. They were going to call. Iban a llamar. So the five forms of the verb ir in the imperfect follow the yo form. Iba, now add an S. Ibas, Iba, Ibamos, and Iban. Ibamos has an accent on the I, just like Eramos has an accent on the E in the we form, because it's three vowels back, breaking both rules of pronunciation. Ver, like to watch TV, ver la tele. Veía, veías, veía, veíamos, veían. You notice that the verb ver takes the endings of ER and IR verbs, but the only difference here, to make it irregular, you just don't take the ER off of ver and being left with the V only add the endings. No, you have to leave the VE intact. And then you add the Ia, Ias, Ia, Iamos, Ian. Like we used to watch a lot of TV. Antes veíamos mucha televisión. So those are the irregulars. Ser, 
ear, and bear. Let's look at usage. Incomplete past action, it wasn't over. So if I want to say like, when I got up, it was raining, cuando me desperté, that's preterite, cuando me levanté, when I got up, cuando me desperté, when I woke up, cuando me levanté, when I got up, I could take llover and put it down here with this ending, llovia, it was raining, llovia. Now in Spanish, it's kind of cool. We have an optional form for it was raining. You can say llovia, or you could take the verb estar, take estar and put it right here, estaba, and now take your ing form of llover, which is lloviendo, estaba lloviendo. When I got up, cuando me levanté, estaba lloviendo or llovia. Both of those are describing an incomplete past action that was not over. Our second usage, what always would happen in the past. For example, the dog would always bark in the morning. The verb is ladrar, so we're going to take the aba ending. El perro siempre ladraba por la mañana, right? We would play soccer on Saturday mornings. Jugábamos football soccer los sábados por la mañana. My mom used to call me every night. Mi mamá me llamaba, llamaba todas las noches. Okay, let's go with some ER and IR verbs. Uh, I would always read a book at night when I was a kid. It's a double imperfect. I'm going to go with era. Cuando yo era, cuando yo era niño, siempre leía libros por la noche. Cuando yo era niño, siempre leía un libro por la noche. Okay, let's go with number three here, the third usage. What one would always do in the past. Oh, yeah, I would always drink milk. Siempre tomaba leche. We would always go to church. Let's go with iba and to put it in the we form, íbamos. Siempre íbamos a la iglesia. Okay, it would always rain in the winter. Siempre llovía durante el invierno. Um, I would always eat a lot for breakfast, comer. Siempre comía mucho para el desayuno. Let's look at our fourth usage to describe people, places, and things in the past. Let's say you're talking about uh, a school that you attended as a kid. It was big, era grande. It was small, era muy pequeña. It was far from my house, estaba lejos de mi casa. A lot of kids went to school there. Muchos estudiantes asistían, attended, asistían a la escuela. It was, a, it was a very nice place. Era un lugar muy bonito. There were a lot of students. Había, right here, H-A-B-I-A. -A. Había muchos estudiantes. They had a water fountain. Tenían una fuente de agua. We used to go, to, we used to go there to play. Íbamos allí para jugar por la tarde, in the afternoon. Describe something in the past, like a difficult math class. Oh, it was really hard, difficult. Era muy difícil. It was very easy. Era muy fácil. The verb ser, we told you, it's one of our top 10 verbs in the Spanish language. Era, you're going to hear that all the time. Let's go to our next usage. To tell time, age, name, weight, and past. Okay, time. It was five o'clock. Eran las cinco. We've already learned how to tell time in the past. This should be review. It was one o'clock. Era la una. It was one o'clock sharp. Era la una en punto. It was 4.30. Eran las cuatro y media. It was 9.15. Eran las nueve y quince. Or, eran las nueve quince. Or, Eran las nueve y cuarto, a quarter after. All right, you use it for name, uh, for names in the past. Uh, her name was Melinda. Se llamaba Melinda. His name was Johnny. Se llamaba Johnny. My dad's uncle's name was Harold. El tío de mi papá se llamaba Harold. Okay, let's go back here to age. To tell your age in the past, it's always imperfect because when you say, like, I was 14 when I blah, 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 well, 
you, you were 14 longer than the instant that you took to, it took to say that you were 14. So tenía 14 años cuando primero fui a Disneylandia. Tenía 14 años cuando primero fui a Disneylandia, right? She was one when we moved to Europe. Ella tenía un año cuando nos mudamos a Europa. I was 15 when I went to Canada. Tenía 15 años cuando yo fui a Canadá. So to say time in the past, age in the past, your name in the past, or someone's name in the past, that's the imperfect. Wait in the past. Gosh, I weighed myself this morning. That would be predator. It's over. It's done. Esta mañana me pesé. I weighed myself y pesaba mucho. And I weighed a lot. You go from me pesé, I weighed myself, referring to the act of weighing, the entirety of it. It's over. Me pesé. But at the instant you stood on the scale and it registered your weight, at that moment, pesaba mucho. You weighed that weight before you stepped on the scale and after you stepped off the scale. So that's an incomplete past action, to be honest. So, pesaba mucho. I weighed a lot. Our next usage, what was happening at a given point in time, okay? When I went to work, it was raining, llovía, or estaba lloviendo. It was cold out, hacía frío, or estaba haciendo frío. Um, there were a lot of people in the street. Había muchas personas en la calle. It was cloudy. Estaba nublado. It was dark out. Estaba oscuro afuera. How about describe pre-existing past conditions, okay? Let's say you're a realtor and you went to a house to check it out and you get back to your office and you say, wow, the house was kind of dirty. La casa estaba un poco sucia. The house was really small. La casa era muy pequeña. The house was on the corner. La casa estaba en la esquina. All these are imperfect. Okay, let's go what one needed. If you want to say, like, I needed money, I needed more time, I needed help, you're going to go with necesitaba in the imperfect. I needed money, necesitaba dinero. I needed help, necesitaba ayuda. I needed time to think it over. Necesitaba tiempo para, remember after para, we always come infinitive. Necesitaba tiempo para pensarlo. To say what you were hoping for. You could say esperaba, I was hoping. I was hoping for a victory. Esperaba una victoria. I was hoping for more money. Esperaba más dinero. Generally, what you wanted, we would say quería. Can you say quise or no quise? Yes, that's reactionary, that's preterite. But most of the time when you say I wanted, like if you're talking about like a gift or a specific item over time, you wanted it. You went to bed on Monday wanting it. You went to bed on Tuesday wanting it. Five months ago, you went to bed wanting it. And you finally got it and you would say, ah, quería este carro. I wanted this car. I wanted to buy this book. Quería comprar este libro. I wanted to take that trip. Quería hacer aquel viaje. Quería what you wanted. Quería más dinero. Why you maybe left one job for another. I wanted more money. Quería más dinero. Now to say in our last usage, where one was at a given past time, estaba. I was in the house. Estaba en la casa. I was out back. Estaba atrás. Ayudando a papá, helping dad. Um, we were downtown. Estábamos en el centro. Mom was at work. Mamá estaba en el trabajo. The girls were at the park. Las niñas, las chicas, las muchachas estaban en el parque. My dad was at his friend's house. Mi papá estaba en la casa de su amigo. We will contrast past preterite and past imperfect, and it will become clearer to you. This is a new concept, the past imperfect. We certainly expect you to be able to conjugate it. It's very simple. You can certainly learn the irregular ser, ir, and ber. But the usage is something that you get a hang for. And as we do more examples, it will become clearer and uh, much more understandable for you. Our last usage that we have listed, 
to set the scene in the past. Okay, it was cold. Hacia frío. It was raining. Llovía. Uh, nobody was there. No estaba nadie. It was dark out. Estaba oscuro. You see, we're kind of repeating ourselves here. Incomplete past action. The action of being dark. When you say, when I got there, it was dark. Estaba oscuro. Well, it wasn't done being dark just at that moment. It was dark before it, and it was dark right after it. So it's an incomplete past action. So all of these all kind of fall into the category of an incomplete past action. Whatever it is you're referring to was not over in its totality at the moment you refer to it. To reminisce. To reminisce. Oh, we were great friends. Éramos grandes amigos. Um, we were co-workers. Éramos co-trabajadores. We were neighbors. Éramos vecinos. It was a nice place. Era un lugar muy bonito. I used to like to eat ice cream. Me gustaba comer el helado. I used to love to eat ice cream. Me encantaba comer el helado. So that's the past imperfect. It's the two, the second, if you will, of our two past tenses. There's the past preterite for a completed past action. It's over. It's done. The past imperfect is for an incomplete past action. When being referred to, it's still not over. The endings for AR verbs, aba, abas, aba, abomos, aban, accent on that A of abomos because it's three vowels back. Any word that's stressed three vowels back gets an accent mark because it violates the two rules of pronunciation. What are the two rules? Well, if a word ends in N, S, or a vowel like we have abomos, the stress is supposed to be two vowels back. So it should be on the middle A there. But it's abomos. It breaks the rule. It gets an accent mark. It's what we call a violator vowel. What is the other rule of pronunciation? Well, if a word does not end in N, S, or a vowel, the stress is supposed to be on the last vowel. You probably know the word for paper, papel, papel. When you, when you pronounce the word papel, you don't say papel, papel. You say papel. You're stressing the E at the end because words that do not end in N, S, or a vowel are supposed to be stressed on the last vowel. So logically, what does that tell us? That all words are supposed to be stressed either on the last vowel or the next to last vowel. So if they're stressed anywhere else, they're breaking both rules and they violate the rule and they get a ticket, right? The policeman comes by, the policewoman, and gives a ticket. A violator vowel gets an accent mark. That's a ticket. And that ticket, that accent mark, that tilde on top of the vowel is telling you to stress that vowel when you pronounce it. Let's look at the ER and IR imperfect endings. Ia, ias, ia, iamos, ian. Well, there's an accent mark on the I all the way down. Why? Yeah, to break up the diphthong, to make it two separate sounds. Ia, ias, ia. With iamos, we have three syllables. We have e, a, and mos. And then we have two syllables, ian, at the end. So the I accent is to break up a diphthong. The accent on the A of abomos, like estabomos, is because it breaks both rules of pronunciation. We've gone over usage and we've gone over our irregular verbs. So that is the past imperfect. Again, we will have multiple lessons more using the imperfect, contrasting it with the preterite. This is your introduction. And now on our verb universe, our Spanish verb universe, right? We know that zero is the infinitive. We got a handle on that. We know that one is the ing form, the present participle, ando y yendo. We know that two is for the past participle, the ado, ido, ado, ido, which is equivalent of the English ed, purchased, witnessed, and so on. We know that number three is the big red planet. Want to call it Mars? I don't care. The big red planet. That's the present indicative. Again, why do they call it the indicative? Because it indicates what happens or what somebody does in the present tense. We know the present tense is loaded with stem changing verbs. We know that they change in all but nosotros. We know they change in the O form. You know what? We know that the go verbs in the ZC verbs like ago, digo, pongo, and conozco and traduzco, that ZC happens in the O form. And guess what? When you do your formal commands for an usted or ustedes person, they're based on the yo form of the present tense. Guess what? The entire present subjunctive, verb tense number eight, is based entirely on the yo form 
of the present tense. That is why it is so critical to be able to understand and know and commit to memory all those little quirky things about the present tense. And again, the language learning module is our best friend because like a shadow, wherever we go, wherever we hear, read, see, or say a verb in the present tense, it's going to be locking it in deeper and deeper into that language learning module. So also from three, a negative familiar command to a friend. Like if you want to say like, don't do it to a friend, guess what you do? You take the yo form again, ago. You change the O to what we call the opposite vowel, and that for ER and IR verbs is A. So now you have AGA. AGA and AGAN are the ustedes commands. If I want to make a negative two command to a friend and say, don't do it, I would say, no lo agas. So don't you see? Three now of our four commands that we're talking about are all based on the yo form of the present tense. That's why we must know the present tense. So that's three. Four is the past preterite. And we know that if you want to get to number nine in the verb universe, planet number nine, which is the green one next to the present subjunctive, it's the past subjunctive. Again, to say things like, uh, I was hoping we would win. Esperaba que ganáramos. Uh, we were hoping that it would rain. Esperábamos que yo viera. The past subjunctive is based on four, preterite. You take the aos form of the preterite, no excuses, or excuse me, no exceptions, change the O of the N factor, of the N ending, and there's your past subjunctive from which you build all five conjugations in the past subjunctive. So to get to nine, you need to know how to do four. To be able to do commands, you need to know three all the way through, right? To do the present subjunctive, it's based on the yo form of the present tense. So to get to an eight, you better know how to do the three. To get to a nine, you need to know how to do a four. Now, the imperfect that we just did, right? You can also use the imperfect to get to the nine. Example we gave, I was hoping it wouldn't rain. Esperaba que no lloviera. Esperaba is imperfect, that's a five, and lloviera is a nine. That would be numerically a 59, okay? I told him to sit down. Le dije que se sentara. That would be a 49. Dije is a J verb in the preterite. Se sentara would be the past subjunctive of sentarse in the past subjunctive. So that would be a 49. Okay. So if you want to be able to say something like, uh, I asked her to leave the money on the table, but when I got home, I didn't see it. Okay. I asked her. That's preterite. Le pedí. Now we come up with K. I asked her to leave the money on the table. Le pedí que dejara el dinero sobre la mesa or en la mesa. Let's analyze. Le pedí, pedí is preterite four. Que dejara, that's a nine. So now we've got a four and a nine. Que dejara el dinero sobre la mesa. Pero, but let's say I didn't find it. Pero no lo encontré. Encontré is a four, is a preterite. You could say, but it wasn't there. Pero no estaba. That would be the imperfect. Pero no estaba allí. So the point we're trying to make, to get to the present subjunctive, verb tense number eight, you have to master the present tense number three. To get to the past subjunctive, you have to master both the preterite four and the imperfect five to get to the nine. And we're going to find out that you can use commands to get to the present subjunctive. For example, tell her to listen. Dígale que escuche. Where does that diga come from? Well, it comes from the yo form in the present tense, digo. You change the o to the opposite vowel for er and ir verbs, which is a. So diga. The le means to her. Tell her, dígale que escuche. Tell her to sit down. Dígale que se siente. That's the usted command. Now, how do you think you form the ustedes command? Let's take one more example. Let's go to the present tense and take the verb hacer. We know that the yo form is ago, okay? It's an ER, IR verb. If I want to make that into a formal usted or ustedes command, I'm going to change that O to the opposite vowel for ER and IR verbs, which is A. So the usted command would be aga. If I want to tell an usted person, do it, agalo. Don't do it, no lo haga. If I want to tell a group of people to do it, I just put an N on aga, and say, aganlo, do it. Don't do it, it'd be no lo agan, with an N, okay? 
So that's how you do that. And you get to the subjunctive, for example, I want her to do the homework tonight. Quiero, present tense, que ella, quiero que ella haga la tarea esta noche. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. This lesson is about introducing the past imperfect, but I'm just trying to show you how important it is to be able to do the past imperfect to get you to the highest level of communication in the Spanish language. And like we've said before, I could listen to a person speak a narration and I could write down every verb that the person speaks or writes. I could take a point value for every verb from our verb numbering system. I could take all those points, add them up and divide them by how many verbs were used. Then I come out with an average and I can tell you by the average what level of communication that narration was. I don't care if it's a paragraph. I don't care if it's one sentence. And I have a scale that I devised, right? It's called the Spanish verb quotient. It's like an IQ for the Spanish language. And that can tell you right away how elevated your level of Spanish is. Now, the, sub the subjunctive is used every day. All day long, you're going to hear the subjunctive. It's very common. But when a student is learning Spanish and he or she can never speak with a subjunctive, then you know his or her Spanish is going to be in the intermediate range. And that may be perfect for the person. But again, if you want to get to the upper echelon of Spanish communication, you've got to be able to do the subjunctive. And so we teach you the tips and the tricks, right? So as we say, you can't incubate for five years and just listen to it a million times and rely solely on the language learning module to do all the work for you. We're going to use our language learning module, but we're also going to give tips, tricks, and tools so we can start creating language, building language on our own. Okay, so that's just a little introduction. I went into the subjunctive, but all this introduction is going to soften you up, is going to get you ready, is going to predispose you to be ready for these higher level communication skills when we start teaching them. Okay, so again, the purpose of this lesson is to know that the past imperfect is the second of the two past tenses in Spanish. You must know the endings. For AR verbs, aba, abas, aba, abamos, aban. For ER and IR verbs, ia, ias, ia, iamos, ian. We went over the usage. Preterite, it's a completed past action. The usage for the past imperfect is an incomplete past action. And great is this or what? There are only three irregulars in the past imperfect. Ser, ir, and ber. Era, iba, and beia. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Hope uh, you're gathering all this. And believe me, this is our first attempt at explaining the past imperfect, introducing it, and of course, introducing on the backside here, the subjunctives and why learning these preterite and imperfect tenses are so very important for overall communication. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for putting all your effort in. So I get a lot of messages from YouTube learners from our community of learners, and a lot of them have seen the Professor Pablo 500 plus page program at professorpablo.com. It has all these charts, it has all this information, and so very much more. It has hundreds of verbs alphabetically organized, and it tells you if it's a quirky verb, if it's a stem changing verb, if it's a Y or a J verb, or whatever happens to it, that is a clue that is also given with all those verbs in alphabetical order. We have sentence starters, hundreds and hundreds, and they go from basic to advanced, and they are coordinated with audio lessons that you can get at Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. You can get them on YouTube as well. There are all sorts of verb charts, uh, grammar explanations that are also hooked up with audio lessons that are coordinated with all the grammar explanations. So all this stuff that I'm talking to you here on YouTube, you're gonna see it on paper, you can have it on your phone, on your tablet, on, on your computer, and it can be with you wherever you wanna go. It's a sum total of my life learnings with the Spanish language. Everything you need to know to be excellent at the language. And I used to sell it for $50. I devised it during the pandemic, had a lot of off time perfected it, and then I lowered the price to 30. And for my YouTube learners, you can use a discount code, a promo code. It is Pablo50, P-A-B-L-O-5-0. 
Sometimes I say Pablo 50, P-A-B-L-O 5-O, but it's not O, it's 5-0, the number. If you type in at the purchase site, Pablo 50, P-A-B-L-O 5-0, you get the whole system over 500 pages for $15 total. So think about it. Everybody that's purchased it has nothing but rave reviews about it, and I think you'll find it very helpful in your development as a fluent Spanish speaker. Okay, that'll do it. Gracias por estar aquí. Gracias por todo. Hasta la próxima lección. And we'll be in touch really soon. Estaremos en contacto ya pronto. Tengan un gran día. Hasta luego. Bye.